What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous. It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, djlittlerock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Are you not entertained? Let me entertain you. Make your next thing a big one. Today on the program, speak of entertainment, I have Veronica Gilson. Hey, you know that name. Oh, yeah, it's my name. (laughs) I'm a Gilson. She's a Gilson. She's a PR manager for Creatures of Clay Band. And I've talked to Cody, the lead singer and the driving force of Creatures of Clay. And I always knew that Veronica was in the background, but I wanted to know more about her. And you're going to get to know more in the next few minutes. So stick around. This week's shows, I will be at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas on Friday night. My usual Friday night gig, the video dance party karaoke jam yes i said karaoke you're the stars of the show every friday night at the rab and saturdays too but i'm usually there on friday nights from 8 p.m until 12 30 in the am they got a full bar the kitchen's open they got good food they have real good food they always send me home with a little a little doggy bag a little to go uh usually chicken wings and it's delicious i tell you so try the food while you're there And they have pool tables. They have 10 diamond-style pool tournament tables. In fact, they have a pool tournament on Friday night. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool and possibly make some money while you're doing it, come on out to the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, 8 p.m. until 12.30 in the AM. I think the pool tournament starts, you have to be there around 7 uh, by 7.30, but 7 o'clock is usually when they start doing their little practice thing and and their little break and run. So, yeah, if you want to get involved with the pool tournament, be there early and stay late. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can always sing and play pool. So, yeah, I, I have people that come out and do both, and we always have a good time at the Rab. Friday nights. Uh, hey. And then on Saturday, weddings are back, baby. Yeah. I got another wedding. I, I, you know, I, I know you're not allowed to come unless you're invited, but uh, I love it. I love the fact that weddings are back. And uh, I get to do corporate events and and all kinds of other events. But I have a wedding this Saturday, and I've already talked to the bride. She's so nice, and um, and and uh, I, I find <laughs> that I talk to brides more than grooms uh, because you know it's it is all about the bride generally. <laughs> Does the groom even need to be there? No, not really. It's all about her. She's she's the princess becoming a queen, and yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. That's tradition. No, I I do enjoy weddings and being part of people's big day. I had a wedding last week, and it was so good. It was in Enola, Arkansas, and, and man, such a good time. It was in a, a barn, but not a barn that you'd think of with chickens and stuff like that. It was a you know a barn that was built for for events, and um, it was really good. Uh, so. Uh, Ah, oh, and I, yeah, I guess I should talk about Deborah Webb. She was the photographer last week. Really good. Um, Dimples and Diamonds Photography out here in uh, Greenbrier, Arkansas. If you're looking for a good photographer in Arkansas, check out the Dimples and Diamonds. Deborah Webb. She was such a pro. So excited. That was It was nice working with her. And she yeah, she's a nice lady too, for that matter. All right, let's get into it with Veronica Gilson. I got her on Skype, so if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Keys Dan. Skyping Veronica Gilson now. Look at that face on my screen. My goodness, Veronica Gilson in the house. Uh, now you now you went sideways again. No. <laughs> <laughs> anybody that's listening to the audio version will never know but i encourage you to check out the video version because you see a smiling face right there next to me 
Veronica Gilson. Uh, you know, I think we, we already went through it. Uh, my name's Daniel Gilson. It's not actually Keys Dan. And you know, I, don't, I don't know, maybe long lost uh, relatives from long time ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's good to talk to you in, in person and see your face. I know we, we've talked briefly on the phone here and there. And I've, uh, I've had, well, all right, I guess for people that don't know and, and people that should know, uh, Veronica Gilson, Veronica G, you're a PR manager, uh, primarily for uh, the Creatures of Clay Band. I've had Cody Westwood, the lead singer and, and driving force of that band. And uh, you, you devote your life to, uh, to helping others, to, to pushing people forward. But uh, I want this to be about you. I want to push you forward. Tell me more. The people have to know. Uh, tell me, uh, tell the people about Veronica Gilson. Who are you? Well, I'm a mother of an autistic child, and I don't know, a PR manager, a photographer, graphic designer, just whatever I can do to help other people. Uh, yes, you know what? I, uh, I, I, it started like a song. I'm a mother. I'm a you know, the, but at the the graphic designer thing is where I want to start, and I do want to talk about uh, you know the, being the mother of a child of autism. There's there's different a- avenues that we can explore. Not to uh, a child now. What's that? He's twenty three years old. Yeah, but I mean that's always, that's a that's something that that people live with their whole lives. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I know um, Tig Nataro. I listen to her podcast uh, called "Don't Ask Tig," and I'm not sponsored in any way by her, but she has claimed to be on the spectrum of autism, and she doesn't she doesn't um, uh, recognize uh, the um, uh, when people say certain things. She doesn't recognize uh, you know uh, sarcasm. And certain things, but tell, all right, I guess we could start there. That's something you you growed a whole child from birth to twenty three. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, well, tell me about you know the the challenges of motherhood uh, since that was the first thing that you brought up. Big challenges, actually. Um, I don't have him on any red dye because he's allergic to it. Okay. Oh, and here and here I chose to wear a red shirt, and uh, the background of the video is red. Uh, was that coincidence? And your hair is red, uh, you uh, know. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so no red dye around the child. Well, he can't eat red dye. No, <laughs> any, any like foods with red dye in it. So. Oh, okay, I remember. Uh, what was it? Twinkies had yellow dye number five. Tell me about the foods. That, see, you'd probably be an expert on uh, on different food colorings and and red dye. I know at Easter time, uh, a lot of people color eggs with red dye. Uh, well, tell uh, is it like M and M's that kind of red? What what other what red dyes aren't he isn't he allowed to eat? It's actually all the red dyes you can't have. That's an amazing allergy to have because I I think when I was a kid back in uh, growing up in the seventies I remember people had maybe a nut allergy and maybe an allergy to shellfish and that mm-hmm. was it nobody had uh, you know nut, uh, nobody had da- uh, dairy allergies or or gluten allergies or allergies to uh, to red dye <laughs> when how did you discover this. Well, his, um, he wasn't doing too well. And when he was little, he hit his head on the playpen and that's not normal. (laughs) And so I just, you know, did research and looked into it. Yeah. What? So are are you saying that the red dye caused the autism or was he born on the spectrum? He, um, I believe it was the shots. Shots of what? baby shots that he got that caused it because he was fine and then he just started hitting his head after his shots and and so i just like looked into it and did research about red dye and didn't feed him anything with red dye and then he, he did a lot better but he had his challenges and stuff so well, I have read and heard some things about the um, the, the the dangers. As you know, I guess the jury is is out and the science is convoluted 
uh, you know, whether uh, having your baby shots, uh, you know, is, is high risk, but I know that it has happened. People have reported and, and, and it has been settled in court cases that, um, mm-hmm. that sometimes, yeah, sometimes the, the baby shots uh, can cause problems. And f- is that something that was absolute for you? You, you found that out for sure. I, I just, I just think that's what it was because when he was born, he was fine. Mm. And then after he got his shots, he started hitting his head on the playpen and that's not normal. (laughs) And then he would like go up and hit people and he couldn't talk. So he had delay of speech. When did he start talking? Probably about four, five. He was like, I, I don't know. He'd hide under the table all the time and stuff like that. And yeah, four's so, kind of late. So I mean, how, how did, did was he able to go to regular school or did you homeschool him? Why, yeah. How was it? He um, he actually went to special needs schools. Mm-hmm. Is there like, is there treatments? Uh, is there medical treatments that that can be done, or is this just a way of life? He was on. Um, Abilify for a while. What is that? But how did that? How, how did um, that help? It kind of like calmed him down. Okay. Because it was hard to go grocery shopping. <laughs> he would throw a fit, and everybody would assume that I'm a bad mother. Mm-hmm. So it would like you know, oh, she's a bad mother. You know, why don't she control her child? You know. So I just have to take them out of the store and just shop later. So, well, you know, any parents that see their see children throwing a fit, uh, you know, will pretty much ignore them. You know, if you're a parent, you know, kids melt down, and it's the it's the parent of that child that feels the most embarrassed. But there's no reason, and I'm t- saying this for almost any situation. There's no reason to be embarrassed by your child melting down. I want that candy. I want that toy. I, and they'll get down on the floor and scream and, and kick. Yeah. But you know, even for a, a child that's not quote unquote on the spectrum, you know, this was like, we, I'd always have to explain, okay, we're going to go to the store and do this and you can't go see the toys. And, and then once you explain it to him, then he did fine. That's you great. Know? I, I know I had, but, a, I had a child uh, that came to karaoke stone, my, my man, my man stone. And um, you know, him and his family would come to the, uh, whenever I had a show that was a, a family oriented karaoke show, he would come mm-hmm. and he is like, you know, really he, functions okay when he's getting his way but uh when he's not getting his way when he feels like he's getting slighted when he's getting wronged you know he would get on the on the microphone to sing you know a few songs with his mom or his dad and but and he would scream through them ah 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 and you know that would be that would be his karaoke but you know i'd i'd turn his mic down a little bit he'd still have some fun he'd leave with a smile and i enjoyed having him around it, it was good that he had that were there any activities that your that your boy and i don't know if you want to say his name but that your boy liked liked to do as he was growing up that would that really brought him joy legos <laughs> he could build anything he'd just look at a picture and build it with legos See now, there's that's something else that's been documented. Is there? Uh, there's always like a skill. There's a certain skill that they that a a person you know maybe their their mind doesn't function the way that most people's do, but our minds don't function the way theirs do. So his uh, is in building. You know, is that something that he excelled in? But did he? take that any further to, is he building uh a, a, anything else or what what's his what's his uh what did he end up doing after well he's doing not right now but um later he wants to like actually get a shop and and he took welding in high school and he did pretty good and he really likes that so he likes to build things yeah, and it all started with Legos. My goodness, I think I liked my Lincoln Logs, yeah. my my scientific toys that that I would uh you know build model cars, 
And, and I mm-hmm. really enjoyed working with my hands. And, you know, I moved out to a new place that I, I don't have a shop just yet. I'm, I'm you know, plan, my plans are to build a shop. And I like building things. When I was in the Florida Keys, I built things because I had the tools. And, and you know, but I, I, I appreciate that he had Legos. You know, did you ever step on those Legos with your bare feet in the middle of the night? Yeah, plenty of times. <laughs> yeah, that, that's motherhood. That's parents. <laughs> that, yeah, I well, change it for the world. <laughs> well, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, and we can always cut anything out that you don't want. Uh, you know, did you do this on your own, or or did you have a a a, a person uh, in your life that helped you through? I have a husband. His last name is Gilson. That's okay. how I got. You know. Gilson. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is he my cousin? Did my cousin do you wrong? <laughs> uh, yeah. He, yeah. That's a long story. <laughs> I don't think oh, he was my cousin. I don't know if he was my cousin. I don't know if we were, were related at all. I, I just thought it was a hoot when I looked on your Facebook page. I saw Gilson, and I went, huh. How, how, uh, small world. And I, I know there, there's got to be thousands of Gilsons in the world, maybe hundreds of thousands yeah. I, I don't know it seems like it's a it's a common name I, I i did you ever figure out the etymology i thought it was irish at some point but you know somebody told I, told me yeah. it was it was french as well there's gilson's in oh, france yeah. but tell me do you yeah. know the etym- etymology do, where are your people from um well the gilson's i don't know right well, like i said i'm just married in right. to that name but soon I'll be changing, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, I've got a little of everything in me, actually. <laughs> I like that. That's the melting pot. I, I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to be just one thing in the near, near yeah. future. Now that we're, you know, uh, we're finding love. You, you, um, you don't know what person is going to be your person and uh, I, I don't think there's going to be the, the, the mixing of, of races is a wonderful thing, you know, and, and having the diversity, eventually it's all going to be like tan. I think we're all just going to be tan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what color we'll end up, but uh, it, it's, 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 it's a wonderful thing, man. I, I love the colors of, of the rainbow, of, of Benetton, if you will. I actually have, like, a lot, like, I have – um, different backgrounds, like, oh, I want to say, you know, from Mexico, I have ancestors from Mexico, I have ancestors from all over Denmark, England, Ireland, oh, it just keeps going, um, my grandma, my great-grandma Lee. Who, where is she from? My great-grandma Lee, she, uh, the names originated in England. Okay. Lee, L E E? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and how, do you, well, see, I got roots like a radish. I, I never knew uh, my dad's side of the family, my, the Gilson side. Once again, the Gilsons, right? I, I never knew him all that well. You know, he left uh, when I was either before I was born or when I was very young. Uh, but I, the, uh, the Cuban side of the family, uh, the, my mother's side of the family, I think we made it to my great grandmother. And it stopped. I don't know. I don't know. I have roots like a radish. I I know some people that have roots like an oak tree. But uh, you know, how far back have you gone? Have you done the ancestry to to find yeah. out who you are? Uh, the Lee family tree goes back to the nine hundreds, eight hundreds, because I'm related to royalty in that family tree. That makes sense. General. That makes sense. You are a princess. You are a queen. Uh, you know, because er, everything I know about you says uh, you know, that you you're a people. Uh, you're a person of the people. You like to help people. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you, know you say you started with motherhood. Uh, you know, when you were explaining yourself. But I think you're you're very motherly. You like to to help the people. You you start and I tell people you you need to help. We need to help each other. You take care of yourself. You take care of your immediate family, and then it keeps going concentric circles out into your community as you're able to do, you know, and you, you became a PR person. But before we, we get into that, I mean, tell me, do you have which, which side of the family? And, and this is all dirt. It's all geography. You know, the people were born in America and I'm, I'm very happy that I'm, I'm born here. 
and, you know, but if I was born any other place, you know, what would be, what would, what, what would have become of me, but you being born where you are. And I, I guess you, what you're in the Northwest in whereabouts are you? Southern Oregon. Oregon. Okay. Yeah. Southern Oregon. Yeah. Southern, the southern Oregon. part down by California. By California. See, now you're going to teach me geography. Yeah. Or, um, you know where Ashland and then you Medford. I, I'm in Medford, Medford, Oregon. Okay. Well, if Medford uh, had a tourism bureau headed up by Veronica Gilson, uh, you, uh, you what, <laughs> what, what good is there to do in Medford, Oregon? Uh, I don't know. It's getting to be like a little LA actually. That's, you know, it's getting to be pretty bad. So well, <laughs> there's a lot of crime here now. So you say that a lot of people from California, because of the way that the taxes, you know, it's just getting so expensive to live in California. So one of the reasons that I left Miami, because it's so expensive to live near the water in the sunshine States, you move and maybe Oregon is the closest place for them to get out, uh, it, it, are, are people from California moving into your your little tiny town? And I don't know if it's oh, a tiny yeah. town. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they're coming here. Okay. The gang, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hey, that could be opportunity for you. You have more growth means more people to talk to. I mean, but it it could also mean more more crime and less resources. Yeah. You know, but uh, is that what's happening? Yeah, more crime. Oh more. boo. Yeah, so, time to move. So Barney Fife <laughs> uh, of the Sheriff's Department with his one bullet, he had to get two bullets, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I make jokes. I make jokes. I only said Barney Fife because I, I just saw a, a video with a guy getting a, a tattoo of Barney Fife, and I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but grow, did you were you born and raised in, in Oregon, South Oregon? Yeah, I'm Medford, Oregon. I was born and raised here. Lived wow. here practically all my life. And you've never lived anyplace else? Uh, maybe up north a little bit, like Eugene, Springfield, Lebanon, Oregon. That's about it. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, is this I've a really been anywhere? So, <laughs> is it a small town? Did you were you born and raised and and you you grew up with the same people uh, from kindergarten all the way to to senior and even beyond? Do you know the same people you've known since birth? No. No, no long lasting really, uh, friendships like that. Well, do you, everybody needs that one friend. High school, high school. Okay. But not like when I was really little or anything. So, well, t tell me about a, a young Veronica in high school. Uh, what kind of trouble were you getting into? Or were you a good kid? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I used to be shy when I was young. And I went through modeling school. My brother put me through modeling school. Not you know, help me from not being shy anymore. So yeah. For people that are listening to the audio version, your makeup is on point. I'm looking at some, uh, cool, uh, you know, you, you got camera ready. I think those, uh, California people might've taught you something as well coming all the way up there to Oregon. Uh, but I mean, you got your hair perfect. You got your, your little, your make your eyes made up and yeah, you got a big giant smile on your face. I mean, it's making yeah. me, it's making me feel happy <laughs> talking to you. It is. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just not used to this. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, you're used to be pushing other people forward and um, and making other people the the center of attention rather than yourself. But you know, the people behind the scenes, uh, you know, uh, all right, uh, all right, Tom Cruise, and I'm going to pick on Tom Cruise uh, because <laughs> he, he's a, fr a friend of the show. Uh, I'm sure he's listening right now. Uh, you know. Tom Cruise is not Tom Cruise by himself. He has to have a whole team of people helping him, uh, helping him out, helping him look and feel, you know, from his uh, uh, physical to his, you know, getting his lines right. I'm sure he doesn't do it all by himself. And you said you had modeling school. So that mm -hmm. is training that you've had to put you in front of the camera, to, to make you more comfortable uh, either in still shots or in video uh, what kind of did you ever do any modeling? Yeah, well, I was I went to modeling school. And we did a I did a little bit of modeling, like modeling, like go down the runway and model clothes. And well, had uh, I had a photo shoot too. So 
Well, for anybody in particular, sad. anybody that we know, or have you? Did you sell some some clothes? Or what kind of clothes were you selling? No, I wasn't selling clothes. It was just a contest, a modeling contest. Oh, but uh, so. the, who who supplied the outfits? Do you remember? Um, actually, they were um, my own outfits. Okay, so. I think I did one of those. I was. <laughs> Here's something. In high school, I was in fashion marketing in DECA, the Distributive Education Clubs of America. For uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, I went to fashion. I was in fashion marketing class. And one of the years, at, in my senior year, I had to make my own clothes and then model them. And uh, I had my grandmother help me sew. I think it was a, uh, well, I mean, I'm class of 1986. <laughs> so I was uh, a break a break dancer. What's that? I'm class of 89. 89, you rule. So, you know, we chewed a lot of the same dirt, but I was a break dancer back then, amongst other things. You know, I was trying to find my way. I wasn't a great break dancer. It was more of a pop and locker, if anything. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I would wear uh, Ocean Pacific outfits. Sometimes I would wear preppy outfits. But in this particular uh, uh, fashion show, I, I uh, made myself uh, kind of a tank top parachute pants type type outfit and then uh-huh. uh and then I, I i did break dancing on stage well i mean did you ever make your own outfits or, you, or was this all no, store-bought no. clothes these are store clothes so. well tell me what kind of clothes did you like maybe we can get you some sponsorship uh, who, who who'll sell you who'll give you some clothes somebody sponsored <laughs> veronica no <laughs> i don't want to do modeling again i actually didn't want to go that route so i became a um photographer instead so i'm on the other side of the cam i got you i mean shoot that so. hey that is sometimes the way to go when you're in the in the music business you know maybe you're a singer like uh like cody westwood is oh yeah he's and, awesome yeah he's a singer <laughs> but then maybe as time progresses he might want to get behind the scenes and become a producer for the next generation I mean, that's something that, that might happen. And you, being a model, a fashion model, uh, you know, uh, you said, huh, look at that guy taking the camera, uh, the pictures. That's That looks interesting. And then you got behind the camera. Did you ever go to school for cameras, for photography? Yep. Nope. And I didn't go to school for graphic design either. No I kidding. Did it on my own. Well, you're very good at it. I mean, shoot, I, I went to, uh, um, well, I went to broadcast school to, to learn how to talk into microphones, which is, yeah, I didn't, even if I don't have anything to say, I still like talking into microphones. I, I guess kind of like a, uh, like a politician. He says a lot without saying anything. <laughs> True. I'm, no. pick, I'm picking on politicians. Okay. Uh, but, um, um, what kind of camera did you pick up to, uh, at first? Uh, just a little 35 millimeter Canon. Ah, sponsored by Canon. No, I have a I have a Canon Rebel. Was it a film camera back then? Yeah, yeah. Like, I have a Rebel now. Yeah, like a uh, I have a T6. I I know that there's T7s out there. I want to upgrade. Yeah, mine's T7. Mine's like 21 megapixels. Oh, you think you're better than me now, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you it, do. It, it also does like I can do like um full-length movies too. Yeah. Yeah, the T six. I mean, it was it's pretty good. I, I I um I usually put it on auto because I'm so timid. I'm so scared when I you know what and really I really don't need this much camera. But when I'm at events and I want to take some good pictures for maybe you know maybe of the weddings or the karaoke shows or of the corporate events, I, I like having the the feel of a real camera. And uh, and taking pictures. Are, do you go into manual? Have you taught yourself f stop and all oh, that stuff? That's what I do, actually, the manual part. Well, how did you learn all that? I just did it on my own. <laughs> what do you mean on your own? You didn't watch a YouTube video, read a manual, anything? Oh, back then they didn't have YouTube. Well, that was like, you know, in high school they didn't have. <laughs> well, even re- even that. reading the manual or reading a book on photography, anything. Yeah. I just did it. And just went out and took started taking pictures and. You 
Oh my goodness. I think back then when I, when I, I, I did grab my mom's Minolta camera, sponsor me mm-hmm. Minolta. I don't even know if Minolta's are uh, a, a viable business I anymore. anymore. <laughs> but I, I, I know she had a Minolta camera and every once in a while I grab it and take a few pictures. But back then, look, uh, you know, people, <laughs> these kids today will never know with their digital cameras that they can't just keep click, 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 click. You know, yeah. we had to wait. We had to get that one shot. Do you, I mean, did you ever t- do photo shoots? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, tell me about the photo shoots that you did. I mean, trying to line up those shots and what kind of photo shoots were you doing? You mean, um, like when I was the, um, model? No. Well, okay. With the uh, modeling, you said that you did runway modeling a little bit, but then, yeah, you got, and then I had photo shoots. Yeah. Too. But then you got behind the camera and then what, did, yeah. what kind of pictures are you that, taking? That was like later on, that was like later on, like after high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But in high school, you, you said that you were kind of shy and, and you took the, the modeling class and that kind of opened you up a little bit. Uh, now, after high school, did you go to college at all? Um, no, I didn't go to college until 2015. How about that? <laughs> and, and I guess I, yeah, go ahead. And let me, uh, let me ask you, uh, why did you go back to college and what did you, what did you want to be when you grew up? You're already grown up. <laughs> well, I, I didn't at the time, I did not know what, what I wanted to be. Cause I was into choir and I was singing and then in high school, I stopped after I graduated and I didn't do it anymore. So I, I didn't know because I was just basically help help taking care of my mom because she got in a really bad accident. Oh, so I kind of had to help her. Well, well, okay. Well, let's ask about your your mom and dad and stuff. Tell me about about your mom. I'm sorry that she got in an accident. When was that? Oh, that was like when I was real young in high school. So this is something you've had to do all of your adult life then is take care of your mama? Um, not not all through the time, no. But when she was in that halo brace, I did. Halo that brace? Was, that, yeah, she had to have this halo brace on it and because she, she broke her neck. Wow. A really bad accident. Yeah. Yeah, I used to work in a hospital. I've seen one, but no, in the movies, you, you see people that, uh, it's, a lot of times it's comedy movies. Whenever they get in a comical accident, uh, the guy shows up in a in a ha- yeah, big halo. Was, oh. uh, and, no. <laughs> but there's no comedy to it, right? No comedy to this one. No, no. that's not fun at all. Even though it kind of looks, you know, like you're a space alien because you're surrounded by these uh, these loops that are nailed to you right or screwed into your body right right here and right here yeah wow yeah i had to help her wash her hair and take care of her so well that's very yeah. responsible of you was was your dad in the picture still or no my dad actually my mom and my dad divorced when i was in after i was born Hey, same. See, I never got a straight answer from my mom, whether my dad left just before I was born or just after it's either six months before or six months after. And I, I've had her on the podcast too. And I, I don't know, I guess she skirted the question. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, you know, dads, come on, dads, stay in the picture. You know, <laughs> my, dad was, my dad was an alcoholic and a druggie. So no. No, never got to know him. Never, uh, never cleaned up his act. All no, right. he didn't want anything to do with me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and he, hey, I, I did have a, a three pretty good stepdads, and uh, any stepdads in the picture? Uh, yeah, but they weren't very good either. Ah, oh, boo! <laughs> Come on, man, step up, step up to the plate. I mean, I guess it's it's got to be tough, man. You know, dating a, a single mom, you know, with a mom with chill, a, a, a lady with children is a is, is an it is. I mean, that's a delicate subject, you know, for for some men, and a lot of men couldn't handle it. There, as you as you already know by experience. So, your mom, how's she doing now? She's doing good. She's doing good. I mean, she's, she's out of the halo. I'm guessing. How long did you, oh, yeah. how long did you stay in that? Oh, I, I'm not quite sure. Was it a year or half a year? Oh, not even that long. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, shoot. That's, I mean, it's good that she had you. 
to ta- to help take care of her. Oh yeah, she had my and and my grandma. My grandma was alive then, and then I had two other brothers, but they were away in the military, so they weren't there. Okay, well, I mean, we're talking about your family a little bit. Tell me about your brothers. How, how are they faring up? They went to the military. Yay. Yeah, they they just went to boot camp, and so my brother had to come home, one of them. So he got an honorable discharge to help with my mom when she was in that halo brace. So, oh, that was home. nice. That was nice. He has her. Uh, that's why we make these kids, is so they can help us when we get older. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to my child, my children that, that never listen to these podcasts ever. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay. But tell me about you. You had the one brother that went to boot camp and then came home. And what did he end up doing? Mm, nothing. I don't know. <laughs> okay. He ended up leaving. How about the other so. brother? Um, he actually left too. So I don't know. Family's not too tight then. Mm, those two aren't, no. Okay. I mean, look, we we all grew up in South Florida, but my brother's in Walla Walla, Washington, and I just I like saying Walla Walla. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's he's closer to you than he is to me now. <laughs> you know, and, and my mom's in Tennessee, and my, my grandma, my 93, 4-year-old grandma, still in the Florida Keys. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're all spread out. Uh, but we still get to talk to each other on the phone. You know, I, I, you know, family, family's so important. And I'm talking to your brothers, man. Family's important. My, my older brother, he, he actually protected me from my other brother because my other brother was always into trouble and caused problems. And my mom had to come home and take care of it because he was in JDH all the time. And he was just a little troublemaker at the time. All right. Well, I mean, hopefully we grow out of these things. Some people never grow out of these things, but, uh, you know, they shape you, they shape your life. And that's, I mean, this, this is what, what makes you who you are today. You know, you helped your mom, uh, you, you're, you helped. And then, uh, when did the, when did the, the husband and the child come? Uh, was that shortly after? Oh, no, I, I didn't get married until like 92. Okay. I was like 22 years old. I didn't have my son until I was like 28. <laughs> See, I, I think any, I think uh, you shouldn't get married till you're 30. That's just my humble opinion. Uh, yeah. So sow your oats throughout your 20s and then get married at 30. But I think that's becoming uh, that's becoming more of the norm. It's becoming a problem. I think the population growth is dwindling in the United States yeah. because uh, more women are going out and, and having uh, careers and jobs and forgetting about families until, Oh my goodness, it's too late. I was, I was working on my career, <laughs> which is not a bad yeah. thing. It's not the worst thing, but uh, you know, uh, population growth helps uh, grow the economy as well. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. who, who's going to take care of me when I'm old and feeble? Do I have to work till I'm 150 years old? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I came to the realization, I think I'm going to have to work till I'm dead, uh, you know, because it, trying to save up for mm-hmm. retirement is, is ridiculous in this day and age. Only the, the very few, the, the 1% have it made, uh, you know, but, um, I mean, that's a whole nother situation. Uh, you, uh, I, I like my life the way it is. I like being able to talk to, talk to cool people like you and that's fun, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> learning more about you. And, and having a nice conversation. But, um, I mean, I see your, uh, your background tells me you, you got pictures there and, um, the track lighting. I think that's, oh, yeah. um, did, that, did you... that's my indie artist wall of fame. And it's not done yet because so much was going on. So I still have to get frames to put it up and everything, put more up, but yeah. <laughs> well, not only graphic design, but interior design as well. I mean, I like the fact that you have pictures. I don't think that I've printed out a picture in over 10 years. Everything is living digitally in all my devices. I, I need to print pictures out and put them up on the walls. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, I used to have so many pictures in the house that I was at before, but I don't have any pictures up on the wall anymore. I, I like that that idea still of being able to walk by and go, huh? 
I remember that. Huh. Yeah, I took that. <laughs> and that was you as a photographer. Uh, you know, you, you are the one that's helping people capture their memories. And, and yeah. I mean, what kind of photography were you doing back then? And has it translated to now? Well, I did some weddings and just um, my friend's um, daughter wanted to get into modeling. And so I took some pictures for her, like a couple photo shoots and family portraits and just nature. Yeah. I tell I you, love yeah, <laughs> I get to work with a lot of wedding photographers. I think that is the most stressful photography gig to have because you only oh. have one chance to get it right. I mean, yes, you could yeah. pose people afterwards and pretend like they were, oh, then you may kiss the bride and, oh, let's like, pose with the cake. I messed up. Try that again. That's right. That's right. What if you missed that first kiss? Oh, you know, but uh, yeah, it's pretty stressful. And, it, and people have to know when they hire you out for a wedding or a party like that, when the party's over, that doesn't mean your job is over because you're taking all those, yeah. those prints home and editing them. Do you have editing yeah. software that you that you kind of fix up the color and stuff? Yeah. What do you I like sure to do. use? It's um, Photo Impact Pro 13. Photo Impact Pro 13. I, I know I use a lot of Photoshop. What is, what is Photo Impact? Uh, way better than Photoshop. It's okay. It's 10 times better than that. Yeah. Is that a PC or Mac? It's PC. And you taught yourself how to use that as well? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, I, man, I, I, I like to learn things. I, you know, I, I went, when I went to Connecticut school of broadcasting, at least they taught me the basics, but yes, you have to go off and actually use the products before you can, you know, before you be, become proficient for it. But uh, my, um, I had an aunt that put me through like a crash course for photography, but I already did some. And the lady goes, looked at my pictures and said you're here why basically i was pretty good that i didn't need to be there and i said well i just want to learn extra stuff you know and that was film photography back then uh no digital this is digital okay now yeah, when you were I, doing when you were using film did you ever uh develop your own pictures uh no did you take had take them to the one hour photos yes oh my goodness see now that is a skill in high school. I had a, a photography class and I had to go in a dark room and you can, you can manipulate. Yeah. You can manipulate the color a little bit and change mm -hmm. things. And so, uh, you know, taking them to a one hour photo, you're at the mercy of the person that's there or the machine. But now with digital, that's all moot. That's all thrown out the window. You can do it with your, with your color correcting software. I, I have a special printer that's for um, photos and everything I have, that I use. It All right. Out pretty, yeah. Well, quit your bragging, okay? You think you're better than me now because you got a this cool no. <laughs> this, this oh, cool printer that prints out these awesome <laughs> pictures. Uh, did you print out the pictures behind you? Um, no. These ones are the indie artists that, that send them to me. Oh, okay. And I sign them and then I stick them on the wall. Now that yeah. is cool. It's an actual wall of fame. Like you said, <laughs> that is so cool. And, and that shows that you, yeah, that you have, uh, that you promote the artist. You, you, you have a love for that. And I, mean, I know we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. I want to get there. I mean, the creatures of clay, man. <laughs> oh my goodness, for sure. I mean, we, we already mentioned it in the beginning. Creatures of clay. That's your primary. Mm -hmm. Your primary objective is is pushing Cody Westwood to the stratosphere <laughs> and beyond. But I, you know, you have other interests. You have other things. I mean, you you grow to a whole child. You went back to school in 2015. What what, what did you go to school for? Uh, for, um, business technology. Okay. What did you get from business technology? Well, I didn't get to finish. I only need 30 more credits. I didn't get to finish cause I had to be home with my son. Stuff was going on with school when he was in middle school or not middle school when he was really young. So I had to just put it on hold. Mm -hmm. So, and that's and just, what 
feed mom and come home and and care for them. Well, that's what we do for our kids and our families, for that matter. We put them first. Uh, you know, and, yeah. and if you have two givers in a relationship, uh, I think that's I think that's pretty cool. But you know, if you, you there's always one that gives a little bit more. And but the, it's only me raising them. I pretty yeah. much raised them on my own. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a special I'm not kind of anymore. So, you yeah. know, no, and and uh, you know, I, I I'm glad you had your your mom and you know your grandma for a little while. That helped a little bit. Uh, did she pass away? Uh, grandma pass away a, a, a while back. Oh, she passed away like way before I had my son. I I was like, it was in ninety five. Yeah, ninety five. I had three grandparents die within a year, so I don't have any grandparents left. I get so. it. I get it. That's uh, you know that's a circle of life, if you will. But I, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, going on, uh, you know, you, your mom's doing okay. Or, or does she live close to you? Yes, she does. Oh well, that's pretty she cool. Lives in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. There's, I think there's a Jacksonville in every state. There's a Jacksonville yeah. here in Arkansas, and there's one in in Florida where I'm from. So there's, there's Jacksonvilles <laughs> everywhere. But uh, that that I'm glad that she has you close. Is is she feeling good? Is she uh, able to get around on her own pretty uh, well? She's actually not doing too well. So she's been in a lot of pain. So I have to like take her to the store and. You know, make sure she's really careful. Hey, that's she hurt herself. So that's your lot in life. Uh, help out the mama, and that's good. I'm glad she has you. Yep. Uh, it's uh, called multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the boy, you said he's into welding. Uh, you know, because you uh, you taught him all that Lego stuff. Uh, uh, you know, is he is he able to work on his own? Is he living on his own, or, or is he living with no, you still? He lives, with me. he lives here with me. Okay. I mean, how, how's he doing? Uh, has How's the uh, his his love life? How's the uh, how's he doing as a person of the in the community? Well, he does pretty good. Yeah, he's a people person sometimes, not <laughs> all the time, but sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm a, you know what uh, I think. What I, I was I would make jokes. Uh, I like crowds, but I don't like people so much. People <laughs> annoy me. <laughs> but I, I i think i'm just making jokes on, on at my own expense because uh i do like people i do like talking to people i look i do like chatting with people and finding out more so, uh you know a model photographer pr manager uh, so tell me singer. about what's saying oh my goodness yeah the the choir tell me how yes. i mean when you were in the choir and you were a singer did, did were you like uh stand out or did they uh, make you do any solos, or were you good at being um, part of the group? The, the choir was not doing solos. So we were, but I am in choir today. What? That's fantastic! Yeah. Still singing after all yeah. these years. Are you going to do some backup? I got back into it. Are you going to do some backup on the uh, on on any of these indie artist records? Or I don't know. Be... I got some of them that want me to do a duet with them, so. I'm not ready for that yet, but when I am, you know, hey, do it, do it. Why well, do you go and out? I'm to, gonna learn how to play the guitar too. Well, you're in a choir right now. Uh, what choir is it? Uh, it's my church choir. That's great. What church? It's um, Sacred Heart. So people want to find you, any stalkers out there, if they want to find you on Sunday, you'll be at the Sacred Heart there in uh, in Oregon singing your little heart out. What's that? I said, I don't want to be stalked. I've already been there, done that. Hey, it's not so bad. With social media, everybody kind of stalks everybody a little bit, a little bit. But it's nice. It's it's nice to have a community. Uh, you know, if people slide into your DMs, business only, business only. You yeah. know, if people want, you know, maybe their photographs ta taken or some graphic design. I mean, your graphic design is amazing. I, I feel like, how do you make these pictures? Are you, is this a template that you have or is this the, that software no, that you were talking it's about? Coming up from memory, you know, I, I just think about, okay, what am I going to make? What, what, what do I want to do? How do I want to do it? You know, you have to cut them out. Some of them are not cut out. So I actually have to take the pen and cut them out. 
Well, even the the um the header on your Facebook page, for example, your your Facebook header, Veronica, PR manager for Creatures of Clay, has all these colors, guitars. You know, you're in a in a golden uh, frame. You know, it just has so much pop. It looks like it's moving, but it's not moving. It's a static picture. It, this is it, it's it feels like. I mean, was it you put all these little um it, these little pieces together? And made that yeah. one image? I start, I start fresh. I start from, you know, a background of, like, white or whatever. My clouds. I'll take, like, my um, graphics uh, or my um, my photography pictures mm -hmm. and on, like, clouds. And I'll use it. And then I'll just build on yeah, once you get proficient, that you know, with me with the Photoshop, and you say it's stinky. Uh, Photoshop is stinky. Your thing no, is so I much. Stinky. You, I said the other one is like ten times better. See, this is me putting words in your mouth. Ah, it's on me. It's on me. Photoshop. I still love you. You know, even uh, me with the Photoshop, I'll, I'll make templates of my own. Do you make your own templates and kind of you know mix and match and use uh, different elements from different templates? Yeah. I'll, I'll save them and then maybe go back to the other ones, like the ones I did for you and all the other radio stations. I'll save them and then, and then put your guys' stuff in them and stuff like that. But yeah, they're all made from scratch. I start from, you know, well, and build up. It, that is cool as can be. Cause usually after I'm done doing these podcasts, I'm, I have to make my own images. I have to find a picture of you, but you've already sent me, uh, you know, the image that I'm going to use for the cover for the audio version. So if anybody's listening to the audio version, go back and check out that cover. And that was made by Veronica, Veronica Gilson, Veronica, the PR manager, Veronica G Veronica. So uh, you say, um, well, I mean, shoot, having uh, being having your name branded, in this day of uh, of social media, you're already Veronica Gilson. You're you know changing your name might might uh, affect your brand a little bit. What is the brand that you that you're going to go with after you do change your name? You mean my last thing? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, I'm going to change it to my great grandmother's name, Lee. Lee. So it'll be Veronica Lee. Uh huh. <laughs> See, that's pretty cool, too. I mean, in this day and age of, of branding, it, you know, even your Facebook or your Instagram uh, or, or your Twitter is, is going to have to stay Gilson, even if you change the title of it. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that weird? You know, it's, it's like, I guess women have this problem or they've, they've had this problem through the ages. When they get married, they change their name. You know, usually <laughs> it's to the husband's name. I know that's happening less and less over the years. Do you think that that women, when they get married, should they change their name, or you know, should they have to change their name, or or do you feel like, hey, don't change your I name if you don't want to? I had to, so that's why I did it. You know, I thought I had to. So ah, see, I mean, that's a, a patriarchal thing, you know. But I, you know, hey, me being a man, I guess I, I'm all for the patriar patriarchy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, women are equals. You know, I, I treat I, I treat people as, as equals, all, all people uh, as equals, uh, you know. But, you know, everybody has, at face value, if you will. You know, uh, treat, treat people the way you want to be treated, unless you're a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> My mom would always say, treat others how you want to be treated, and that's exactly what I do. Yeah, unless you're a psychopath, unless you're masochistic. Uh, what if you like uh, having having people stab you with with pens or something? No, Thank don't you. don't treat I people don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> some people have some weird fetishes. Let me tell you, but uh, you know, I digress, and I know that I'm taking up a little bit of your time. I don't want to take too much more time uh, of you, I but but I mean, we've gotten through. Uh, you know, 2015, you tried to get back to school, uh, you know, motherhood and daughterhood gets in the way, uh, you know, so th that comes first. I don't, uh, maybe I shouldn't say gets in the way. Maybe it, I should say it comes first, your motherhood and your daughterhood, your family always comes first. And, and that's, and, uh, Cody comes, and Cody's in that too. So <laughs> it's like, well, okay. You know. As we, as we, uh, head down, down towards the end of this particular conversation. Tell me how you got involved. Well, with, um, 
not just Cody Westwood of, of Creatures of Clay, but are you doing any other PR managing or are you no, wanting to branch I'm, out? I'm, I'm Creatures of Clay's PR manager. Exclusive. I'm, yeah. Exclusive to them. Okay. How'd you get involved with them? Cody came to me. <laughs> he found me. Well, I mean, <laughs> was he stalking you? Does Does he live close by? Yeah. Or where? I, I, I don't think he lives close by to you. He lives in Maryland on the other side of the United States. <laughs> yeah, clear across the country, 3,000 miles away. Uh, yeah. how, how did he find you? Uh, on um, Twitter. Okay, and then w- what made him uh, think that you were the right fit for being uh, a manager? Or, or you know, did, did, did it start out as like, friendship or what? He came to me and he just wanted a, a graphic for a logo you know and that's how it started so well that's a yeah. good start i mean are you thinking about branching out and making logos for other people if people want to well, i do if you look at my um twitter page uh, the pin tweet says if you need anything done let me know and you know have it up there yeah, your artwork speaks for itself. I, I think people can do, uh, you know, do wonders with getting you, with hiring you out uh, as being their graphic designer, making logos. Well, it's I, it's not easy. I, I already did uh, two CD covers, and I did a book. Um, my ex husband's um, he he wrote a book, and I did his the cover of his book. So. Well, that was nice of you. I mean, see, this is people don't don't think about those things. You need a team to get yourself to a different level. You know, I, I made my my own logos, and I had a little bit of help with the Radio What logo. I like that one. Uh, my, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, the other th- the other three logos that I use the karaoke one, the video dance party one that you see in the video just underneath your your picture there. Is um you know I made those the the white one is the the one I made the a long time ago but I don't have those skills I I've recently I learned how to um, take them from a flat image to make them button out a little bit or or what is it flare out you know these are little yeah, kind of like like the shadow underneath it that's kind of like what I do on a lot of my the wordings I put like the shadow like it's kind of popping out at you and see i like color if you notice i have a lot of it that has color because that grabs people's attention that is for sure that's why i put a little bit of color behind us uh, you know instead of a, a static image but um <laughs> you know i i do admire and i know when they come down my facebook feed my twitter feed my instagram feed i know when you're it's your picture because you have a signature, especially when you're promoting for the creatures of clay or or promoting the um, the fact that you're a promoter, uh, uh, you know, for yourself, I, your uh, your, your uh, picture for your your profile picture for Facebook has a uh, you know PR manager for creatures of clay Veronica, you know, and it's just it pops, it makes it it makes a static picture look like it's boom popping out at you, and, you know, that's yep. a skill. <laughs> That's a good skill to have, you know, and a lot of people couldn't, a lot of people couldn't take that time out to learn, uh, such a skill. So, uh, everybody, uh, slide into Veronica's DMS and hire her out as your graphic designer. I'm talking to you, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) but uh, what other things are you getting into? Uh, you know, how, how do you, uh, how do you make your living? Uh, just by doing what I'm doing, you know, I mean, like if somebody needs a graphic or something done, they just like put it in my um, PayPal account. Well, very good. I found your your Facebook and your Twitter, um, and and of course in your Instagram, and then I, I have all those links. But do, do you have a website? Yeah, well, it's the Creatures of Clay website. Okay, yeah. Is that something that did... contact on the contact is. People need to contact me. It's on there, too. Did you design the Creatures of Clay website as well? I sure did. Cody King, Cody said, I said, Cody, do you have a website? He's like, no, my nephew's supposed to do it. And I said, I know how to do it. 
<laughs> he's like, okay. Girl, so you I are did, a, a yeah, one. I did fun websites before. So you are a one stop shop. You know, if people want to, uh, you know, especially a band that needs to have, you know, put out their shows, you, you want people to have your music. You, you want them to have the merchandise. You want a gallery. You, you know, that stuff that you all, that you know how to do. Is that, uh, do you know, how did you learn how to code? Well, I, I did it on my own, basically. I, I didn't take no classes. I didn't, I just, for experience, just look and just do it. <laughs> well, that's right. Like, yeah. We don't need no school. We do it on our own. We learn. You know, that's something that I have discussed with other people is now with YouTube and Google, the way it is, it's look, if I don't know, if I don't have the answer, give me 30 seconds. I will have the answer. It's all mm -hmm. on your phone. It's all in your computer. Do you think people right. need to go to higher education anymore? Well, see, I didn't even finish. I was going to take the part about advertising and stuff, and I didn't get to take that part, but I think I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Advertising I, and all that. Well, I understand yeah. what you're saying about going back for a refresher course. Back in 1986, I went to radio school. I learned how to uh, tape, you know, uh, use cart machines, uh, you know, mm -hmm. run tape to tape on reels, make commercials that way, cut and splice actual magnetic tape and now with computers it says cut and paste uh, you know but people you that that comes from analog when people used to cut the tape and paste it back together and even movies do the same thing but i i went back to uh, to radio school back in 2003 for a refresher course so you took the uh you know you learned how to use camera uh, it, with 35 millimeter with film and now mm -hmm. you know how to use the digital cameras very well with your T7, with your Rebel, with your Canon Rebel. Yeah. <laughs> Just one better than me. No, I, I've seen it. Uh, you know, I've, I've been looking at it and I've been dreaming about it and going, maybe I should step up. Uh, did, did you ever use the T6? What was the difference? Or what's what's the... Um, the T7 is like, you can do full-length movies. You can... Um, it, 21 megapixels i mean that's pretty yeah. high <laughs> yeah yeah i remember when I, I think the first time i got a, a six megapixel and i thought wow nobody's ever gonna you know this is great you can blow this up to like uh you know t uh, eight by ten and now with 21 you can probably blow up to uh to a street sign you know yeah <laughs> that's fantastic cool <laughs> well you're a very talented lady and a very nice lady and and I see that you, you do like helping people. Uh, do you think that, that uh, Cody's got you under lock and key? Or do you want, uh, do you want to branch out and help other artists? Yeah. Such as well, I, I kind of do help other artists. I, I always support them and um, do extra things like make playlists with them on it. And just whenever they need help with something. But I'm creatures look like. Well, tell me about the uh, the pictures behind you. You had the uh, the independent artist. Are you? Uh, do you get involved with them? Do you uh, follow them around from show to show when they come close, or or, or do you uh, subscribe? Um, nobody's ever nobody's ever came here. So <laughs> if they came here, I'd go see them. Yeah, but they haven't came here. So <laughs> not even Bend, Oregon. Nothing. Not nothing close. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're you're in a geographical anomaly nobody comes there like i said um sometime soon we want to move so all right well hey veronica it's been awesome chit-chatting with you i don't want this to be the last time that we talk i think this has been great your your first podcast i want everybody to go to our website creatures of clay the band.com we have a new song called Dirty Little Lie. And when you buy a song, you can put your name in a drawing for a t-shirt for Dirty Little Lies. And it's not on the website or anything. And you will have a chance to win. The more you buy, the more chance you have to win. Yeah, I was looking for a picture of the t-shirt. The Is it not on the website? You don't have a picture of it yeah. yet? It's I yeah there 
you go on the website, you go on to the um, news part. Music? And it'll show you the picture that the graphic I did, and there's a T-shirt in there. Okay, there it is. Well, yeah, Dirty Little Lies, it rocks. I mean, did... That, that graphic I designed. <laughs> you are amazing. You know, it, it looks <laughs> like it's in space, but, you know, it, it has so much movement on a static picture i can't say that enough times just everything pops out and you've done you've done wonders teaching yourself and that you know it, wow that's it, it, I, teach, I teach my son to like i was taught um growing up with my mom she's like um we very had very little because we were poor mm -hmm. and so we had to make some, whatever we had make into something so improvise we had to improvise so that's basically what i do you know and then i come up with ideas that makes you think about coming up with different ideas well veronica it's you know i've been following <laughs> you around probably uh, over a year now at least uh, maybe maybe even two maybe even two years Has, how long have we we've been chasing Three each other years. Three years, maybe. Oh my goodness, you know. And I, I like all the music that you send to me from Creatures of Clay. I, do you ever get involved with the recording? Is are you ever going to sing backup for for Cody, or, or maybe sing a duet? My, my, my goal is to get good, and then maybe Cody can write me a song, or I can do a duet with them. Something. That's my goal. Well, I want to see you coming down my uh, my Instagram feed of you singing maybe even some karaoke tracks or or some uh oh, some solos karaoke, you do <laughs> see I, yes, I was wondering I, if you go to karaoke and use those pipes of yours and go out and sing in public um when i get there i will because <laughs> i'm practicing a lot but yeah it's it's shaping up better so video or it didn't happen i need to see videos of you singing in front of you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people, maybe 50 I people. I have a bunch of people lined up that wants to sing with me. Yes, so. you're a very popular person. Well, there's indie artists out there, one from England, one from Scotland. So, it, you know, people are wanting to sing with me. I'm like, okay, you just got to wait a little longer, okay, because I want to be prepared. <laughs> Well, Veronica, as we wind this thing down, uh, I want you to give shout outs to people that have helped you along the way. If you want to, uh, you know, name names and, and let people know that you're thinking about them and anybody that, that, that you don't name right now, they're going to be very hurt. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. First of all, I'd like to thank Cody for everything because he's the one that got me here. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just a chance, uh, a chance to find you on Twitter. Uh, you know, people find each other online all the time. This this world is getting bigger and smaller at the same time. It's cr it's crazy, uh, you know. So social media has worked for you. You've made a lot of good contacts there. So any other shout outs? Yes, I'd like to thank Tracy Lee for our um, video, helping us with our video, So Entwined. And I'd like to think about... Um, just all the indie artists out there that have been very supportive for us and retweeting our stuff out there and getting it out there as well. And I also want to thank um, you <laughs> and everybody else. Well, Tracy Lee, uh, any relation to you, the Lees? No, no. Wow, what not. a happy, what a happy coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> She's just a friend. And we also won an award, or Cody won an award for So Entwined, the video, best yes. video award. Uh, which which award did he get? Who, whose award show? It, it, it's um, Eastern Europe. Oh, very good. Yeah, he got it from Europe. I like that there's a lot of these indie uh, awards. It's nice to be recognized for the work that yeah. you've done. You know, if somebody, people people go, oh, I, I do the music because I love it. You know, I, I'm not looking for for fame or reward. But if somebody does give you a little, hey, good job, you know, a thumbs up, pat on the back, pat on the head, you know, that makes you feel good, makes you feel like you've, you've done something. And uh, I'm glad that that. That that Cody it, has you and you have Cody, and that's uh that's a good so it's a good relationship. 
We're a great team. Yeah. I, have you ever met in person? No, but hopefully next year we will. All so. right. So that plan is in the works. I would love to yeah. to have you back even even for like 15, 20 minutes if the two of you get together and we can just do a, a little chit chat. Oh, that would be awesome, actually. Yeah, it would. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, a- any other avenues you want to explore? Anything else you want to give shouts to? Um, I'd like to shout out to... Um, I don't know, just all my friends out there that have been very supportive. There's so many of them. I can't name them all because there's so many that have been helping us and been there, you know, and all the indie artists out there that's been really supportive. Excellent. JC Miller and a bunch of other ones. Well, Veronica, it's been a sincere pleasure having you on my video screen and in my audio ears. And I I hope that people have found out a little bit more about Veronica Gilson, the PR manager uh, for Creatures of Clay, the band, baby. Uh, But, um, you know, I like to finish these things off, and I don't want this to be the last time that we talk. Let's do this. Uh, sometime in the in the future as t- as things progress if you have more things to promote but uh, I usually finish these things off with last words for the people this could be words to live by something you heard a long time ago maybe a mantra that you wake up with every morning or just whatever pops into your head at this moment in time Veronica Gilson give the last words for the people just never give up on your dreams and always go for your goals, no matter how high they are. Well, there you have it, party people. Veronica Gilson, Veronica G, PR manager for Creatures of Clay Band, exclusively. <laughs> but also a photographer and a mom and a daughter and t- so many more things. A graphic designer, singer. Oh, I expect to hear her sing on a song coming up real soon. And I hope I get to be uh, privileged enough to play it on radio. What.com. So exciting. Things are happening. Things are happening for Veronica and they couldn't happen to a nicer person. Yeah. (laughs) It was good connecting with you, Veronica Gilson. Thank you so much for being a part of the, what makes you famous podcast. You're part of it now. Hey, you did it. That was your first podcast. I hope I wasn't uh, I wasn't too drilling. I hope I was gentle. <laughs> All right, Veronica, thank you so much once again. That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. Now, if you, yes, you, my loyal listener, if you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email keysdan at aol.com. That's it for me. It's KeysDan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.